What does this crazy looking log and this awesome looking 3D print have in common? I'm gonna turn them into a lamp, this time on Jairus of All. About two years ago, a friend of mine was doing landscaping. He cut this down because I didn't want it next to his house and it was a really cool shape. So I stole it and I saved it and I dried it out. Now I need to clamp it down, try to get a cut on this because there's no way I can run a lamp cord up through the middle ah, of a log this size. My thought is that I'm gonna cut it here and about here so that I have a nice piece to make the lamp base out of because I want the lamp cord to be hidden the whole way through the center of the log. So I can't go through all of these twists, but I can do two of them. I wanna cut it just below this section and just above this section. That's the piece I'm gonna use. This was an old saw. I have no idea where the bolts that were in it went, but these will do for now. I wanna make sure this cut is very straight to where the top of the lamp is gonna be. That way it actually sits level, but it curves. So I need to cut it not quite straight down. And it's been a really long time since I've used a handsaw like this. So this is interesting. I have no idea what kind of log this is or why it grew in a zigzag fashion, but it does look cool. It's gonna make an even cooler lamp. It's a lot more difficult to cut it with this. This saw is very dull, but it's a lot easier to use because it's nice and long. This one is new, I borrowed both of these, but this one's sharp. It's just difficult to make this cut because the piece of wood is so big and the saw is so short, but it is going through it faster. Not fast, but faster. Ugh. This thing is a nightmare to cut through. For some reason, now that I'm past halfway on it, it's starting to, it must have like internal stresses because it's trying to pinch the blade of the saw. It makes it almost impossible to cut because there's so much drag on the blade without the teeth even hitting it. This one's a little bit easier. But once I get to the bottom, it locks up. This sucks. <laughs> Almost there. Pro tip, if you hold the handle lower down, you're putting less pressure into the blade because you're, you know, you're pushing more along the plane that you're cutting instead of into it. It makes it easier. I can put more effort into the back and forth and less into the teeth. Yes, not too bad. A little bit of sanding right here and I think it'll be dead even. I'll see you in a little bit when I finish the next cut right about now. I got a cut, it's in two pieces now. And this one looks really cool. The reason I can't use this side of it is because right in the middle of it, my friend made a cut where he was gonna try to chop the top off where he got it cut down and then he stopped halfway through. So this piece is not gonna be able to be used for what I wanna do. But now it's time to make some decisions on how I'm gonna drill these holes. And I've got my sweet long drill bits out. But first I need to make a hole for this. And I need to go in steps. I want this cord to go through the middle of the thing. So I need to figure out where it's gonna go on the top before I start shaping the log. And I need to get a hole that goes down through here. Luckily, I cut it straight enough that the Uncle Buck drill bit, see that? I thought I was gonna have to go on angles and try to get the holes to meet up like to this corner, but I can't go the whole way through it because I want this centered on the top and I can't start the hole there and then make it over to here. So I need to drill this hole and I'll still have to drill at an angle and make a meet up, but it'll be a very short distance instead of a foot. Was that a really long explanation? No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't account for this. I assumed inch and a quarter was the size of this, but it is not. I have a solution. I have this hole cutter. That'll act as a pilot hole for that. And then I'll set the cutter part to take off the extra material. And after I drill through it with this, then I'll drill with that. Oh man, this is gonna be sketchy. Now I want the lamp, I want the lamp to be centered, but not so much from the bottom of the lamp. I want it to be more centered from the middle of this section here. I want it to look like it's coming out the center of it. And I cut it at a crazy angle because I knew it didn't matter because I was gonna shape this. And now I wish I'd taken more care to do it <laughs> correctly. I think that'll be all right. I should probably put this in the vise. I don't mind marring up the bark. The bark's gonna come off. See if I can make this stick out further. Because I have the pilot hole drilled, this can be below the drill bit because this is what acts as the guide and that cuts. So at this point, I can put it lower than that and it'll be okay. I might be able to just break that off. 
The grain is so crazy in this, and this wood is pretty dense. I thought it was just pine, but whatever bush this thing was, or tree type thing, it's hard. Question is, how deep do I need to go? I can't put this together until the wires are connected to it. And I can't connect the wires to it until the wire is run through the tree. And this falls off because it just goes on and it clips onto these little tabs right here. So I need to figure it out without it being assembled the whole way. So I gotta go deeper than that. I don't wanna lose it in there. Be able to get it out, it'll just be a pain. I'm just gonna have to use the die grinder to rip out that edge so I can get this down in further. The cord comes out of this part here. I need the extra space down there because the cord will sit below that. But I want this set entirely down into the wood. I do need to ream this out like crazy to get this thing in there further. Oh, oh, it's so close. Actually, I just realized this isn't pushed together yet. So it's going to get, it'll be over an eighth of an inch shorter. There we go. Now for the cord hole. I don't know if the spade bit or the regular style bit is more likely to wander when I drill up through this thing because I'm gonna be crossing back and forth through the grain. So it's gonna want to. I don't know which one's better, but I'm gonna use the Uncle Buck bit because Uncle Buck. I need to see where the wood's at. All the bark's gonna come off of this eventually. I left the bark on it so that I would get these cool trails and marks from bugs eating at it. That way it would look interesting. And it does, and if it didn't, I had this plan to use wire wheel on it and wear it away and make it look weird like that, but it did it on its own. Let nature do the job for me. Now I can see those two joints and I'll know if I'm gonna drill through them or not. Oh, that's awesome. Look at this thing. Look at how awesome this is. That's too cool. So even if I have to stop short here because I'm gonna pop out there, I can come from an angle. I don't wanna hit this one because if I start hitting that one, then I've really got an issue. Now I have something to aim for. So I am basically there. I'm close. At this point, I'm close to that elbow. So now I'm gonna drill slow. And if I see it start to come through, I'll just stop. Oh yeah, way past it. So I'm up to here. So I cleared one hurdle. Oh no, I came through. I knew I was getting close. I should have checked it. I was gonna drill just a little bit more and then mark it and check it one more time. It was the one thing I didn't wanna do when I was doing this project was blow through it like that. Well, it's there now. Yeah, I'm just gonna not touch that. It's all wonky in there because of the die grinder. There's like crazy holes all over the place and I can't get it to start where I wanted it to. through. There we go. There's at least a decent sized hole in there now. Oh, <laughs> it came right out when I went from that side. All right, the part that I was most worried about is done. And I only blew one hole in it. <laughs> the reason I'm coming from the bottom up is so that I don't pop through and then mar up my cool looking piece of wood from on the bottom side, down here. Oh no, it's falling out. This isn't the best way to hold it, but. It's what I didn't want to happen. I'm trying to hold it not against it because if I do and the blade starts to bind up, you know, you're supposed to hold this against it. That way the saw doesn't start to move back and forth. But if I do that, it mars up the surface of it like it did right there, just a little tighter. Plus, like I said before, this wood is incredibly hard. I don't, I have no idea what it is, but it's pretty dense. And usually these blades just tear through wood. And the reason that I'm doing this instead of just shaping it is because this entire piece would be a bunch of dust if I didn't cut it off. So I'm trying to minimize that by using this thing first. Now it's gonna be some back and forth because I need to
figure out how I want this to sit on that. I want it to sit down onto it pretty well. I'm gonna take more of this part off, that way it can sit down on farther, because that's interfering directly right there. Actually, change your plants. I'm gonna try something else that's not as dusty. I found this model on Thingiverse by user named Nervous System. You've probably seen it before. It's super popular because it's really awesome. It's printed out of PLA and then I painted it with rubber paint and glow in the dark paint. And I thought if I did enough coats of that, it would make it smooth and it didn't. So I used XTC 3D and I covered it with that, which took forever because it's, there's so many surfaces. But epoxy, even though it sets up after a while, if you get it warm enough, it gets flexible again. The PLA is flexible once it gets hot. So if I heat gun this, I might be able to get it shaped to this really well. And then I want to do wire wheeling to this because I think it's going to make it look really cool inside of there. I'm going to do this first though, because if this does work, then I don't have to sand any more of that away. Here we go. Oh yeah, see the, see the flex? If I do it too much, I can very easily screw this whole thing up and it'll just sag and fall apart. Just want to get it soft. Even though the temperature this thing has to get up to is not that high, it's difficult to get it there because it has so much surface area that gives the heat back off very quickly. I really want it to look like it gr is growing off of this piece of wood. Everything's working out. Well, except for blowing through the side of the wood with that drill bit. <laughs> James got, his ass got destroyed a little bit. <laughs> this wire wheel is not cutting it. It's burning the wood. Try this again. The wire wheel smoothed it out some, so there's no flat spots anymore, but it also burned the wood, which ended up working out in my favor because it blended it. So now it looks, I don't know, more natural that way. It's time to put the lamp stuff in which means I gotta run the cord through this. You can buy these parts at stores. They didn't have a lamp kit that didn't have a switch on the thing. Obviously this sits down inside, so there's no way to hit a switch on this part. So I got an inline switch. I'll run the wire up through and connect this, and then I'll put that on. That tight for a second, there it is. Like I said earlier, once you put this on here, it doesn't come back off very easily once you put it on the whole way. Before you attach the wires to this, make sure you put them through the bottom of this receptacle. Otherwise you'd have to take them all back off and then put that on and then put this back on. Tuck down in there, just like I wanted it to be. These little guys are pretty simple. You can see the little wire pinch things right there. They penetrate the insulation to make contact for the switch part. And then the other piece of wire is just rooted around through and it doesn't get messed up. The only thing you have to pay attention to is that one wire is ribbed and it has thicker insulation on it than the other one. The one that does not have insulation on it is the one gets clipped. Also, if you're doing this, don't have this plugged in. This is important that that's not in the wall. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but you never know. Am I doing this right? Yes, I am. This wood looks awesome. I normally like to stain stuff, but in this case, I, I don't want to cover up anything that's on it, but I do want to protect it a little bit, which is why I'm just going to use some tongue oil. This stuff is more difficult than most finishes because you have to put it on and then you have to let it dry and then you have to put it on again and you have to keep doing that if you want it to get glossy and everything, but it is a nice protective finish. I don't want this thing glossy. I want it to look pretty natural, but this should make it look better. Hopefully this doesn't eat the Patreon names off the table. I got Spacebar a little bit right there. And Dan Dugmore. You probably know the deal by now, but if you want to be a patron, you get your name on the table in white or gold, depending on which level you want to get. And you get access to extra content like outtakes and behind the scenes of building weird stuff like this. And 3D files for many of my big things that I create. Link in the description. And once I've got it all wiped down, I just need to let it sit till morning. So I'll see you then. Yeah, not really. I couldn't leave well enough alone. Just like most of my projects, when I start getting involved with them, I keep finding ways to make them better. 
which I had an idea for this thing and I just couldn't help myself and I had to do it. So I snuck out to the garage late that night and I started working on that 3D print again. The idea that I had that wouldn't let me sleep was to cut the bottom section off of that 3D print and then shape the little tendrils with heat to the log to make it look like it was growing out of it. So I covered the whole top of it with masking tape. I heat formed them to, to the places reasonably close to where they were gonna be and then I marked them so that I had areas that would be able to be pushed up against the log. But in order to do that, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to just heat form each individual tendril. And as I heated each little thing sticking down, I pushed it into place and I super glued it there so that the whole thing would stay. And I worked my way around doing them one at a time. And once those were done, I thought I was finished because it looked the way I wanted it to. But again, I couldn't leave well enough alone. And the original idea was to make this thing look like something that was from out of Avatar. Well, everything in Avatar glows blue, not green. This is all white and then it glows green and it just, I didn't like the look of it. So I decided to try to make it glow blue at the top. I had to do something special with it. I rinsed all the ink out of a Sharpie with some acetone and I collected it and then I used that to color some of the glow-in-the-dark paint and I loaded it into my automotive paint gun that I have from when I used to paint cars and I painted the top of it blue because in my test it looked like the glow stuff underneath that l blue ink because it's just ink and light can pass through it it made it glow blue but it didn't, didn't make it glow blue it still glows green but since the top of it was blue, I thought it'd look cool if the bottom of it was green. So then I mixed in some green paint with the glow paint and I painted the bottom part of it with that. And then I blended it all together and eventually I got it the way that I thought it looked cool. And I decided that that part was done. But then I was like, man, it'd be really cool if I put even more paint on this thing. So I decided that I would paint all of the worm holes that were dug between the bark layer and the wood with glow in the dark paint also. And I just finished putting another coat of the glow-in-the-dark paint on all of the little worm things. When it is 100% dry, you're hardly going to be able to tell that there's paint in those areas, but when I turn the lights off, it looks like this. Can you, can you see that? It's, it's awesome. <laughs> it looks like glow worms pooped all over the log. And then, it looks even more cool when I put the thing on top. And now the whole thing looks like some weird plant out of the Avatar universe. But it's a lamp. I got this cool bulb. It's LED. Generates like no heat. I kept it on the other day for a really long time to make sure that it would not get hot when it was in here and it never develops any heat at all. So this thing will be totally fine. My super awesome weird glowy lamp is done. Not every project that I do on this channel is epic and crazy. Sometimes I like to make stuff that's really cool looking like this lamp, but I always put a huge amount of effort into it to make it really awesome. So if you're not subscribed with notifications turned on at this point, you're gonna wanna be, because next Sunday I'm starting a really cool project. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.